All right, so I just finished filming a YouTube short and I need to go through the process of setting up the project in Finder, getting the footage imported into Final Cut, everything I do to get it up and running and ready for edit. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm gonna put my SD card into my reader and we're gonna capture this footage through Finder. All right, so we're gonna navigate to that SD card we just inserted. Uh, we got this here, here's my file, and it's sideways like this because I film everything for YouTube Shorts, TikTok. Uh, I haven't done Instagram Reels yet, but all of that stuff is vertical. So uh, I need to make my file tree template or copy my file tree template. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Midland Pictures and then I have a template for shorts here, YouTube shorts template. And then I'm gonna come down here to my third window and go to my YouTube channel shortcut, scroll all the way down. We're gonna make a new folder. This will be 137. And today's date is the 16th. And six FCP tips in 60 seconds. Then I'm gonna copy all of this here and paste it in. That'll take just a second. And then I'm gonna to navigate to my media folder, film, A-roll, and I'm gonna drag and drop that over to the A-roll folder. So while that's copying, I'm over in Logic, I have the audio that I used for the YouTube short. So because I'm filming my YouTube shorts with my Canon EOS R, the EOS R has a shotgun mic mounted on it, but the audio isn't as good as my boom mic that I use, which is right here. And so I prefer to record using my boom mic directly into Logic Pro and then use that audio and then have the shotgun audio that's on the camera as a backup audio source in case there's an issue with this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you can see this is an untitled project. I'm gonna go to save as. So I'm gonna to navigate to 137 and then project files and then make a new folder here called logic. And then I'm going to call this 137 uh, underscore six FCP tips and then 001. All right, so I need to export this audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that now. And we'll go to export and one track is audio file. We're going to navigate to the location where we want to store this. So I'm going to go to YouTube channel, scroll down 137 media, audio, location, and then I make a new folder and call this boom. And then I have uh, this already filled out, but you can see the file name 137 underscore six of the audio boom 001. And we'll go ahead and export that to there. And while that's doing that, We'll come back to Finder and we have our footage captured. So I'm going to rename this to 137 underscore six FCP tips underscore um, a roll underscore Matthew underscore EOS R underscore 001. And that's all labeled the way I like it. And then I have to grab my screen recording. So we're going to go to my desktop. Uh, where my screen recording is and it's right here screen recording and I'm going to put it in the corresponding screen recording folder so we'll copy that over and then we're going to rename this 137 underscore 6 FCP tips screen recording and then 001 all right, so we've got all of our media. We've got our audio from our boom, we've got our video from the EOS R, and we have the screen recording. Those are the three components that I use to bring together to edit my YouTube short. So the next thing that I need to do is open up my Final Cut library template. I'm gonna rename this 137 6 FCP tips, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Just a quick reminder that if you really like videos like this that show sort of intense workflow, click the like button for me so that I know to make more videos like this. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you do decide to subscribe, thank you and welcome to the channel. I'm really glad to have you here. Because I use my template, you can see I have all of my organization ready to go. The project event, footage, audio, stills, graphics, screen recording, and content. One thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to create a smart collection that is for the boom audio because I've been doing this quite a bit and instead of having just a normal keyword collection, I'd rather have a smart collection where it automatically filters in 
And if I know how to use my computer, I'll navigate to the right place because I can't talk and navigate at the same time. We're going to call that boom and then I'm going to double click it and then go all. That's fine. And then text and then includes boom. New smart collection. I'm going to do the same thing for screen recording. So new recording. And I'm going to do the same thing. Text screen recording. The reason I do that is because then when I just drag it into the event, it's automatically going to go into the boom smart collection. So I don't have to drag it in the event and then assign it to that keyword collection. I just want it to automatically assign to that keyword collection for these. So I'm going to highlight the footage folder, navigate to finder, uh, and then go to my project. 137 media film, a roll, drag that in here. And you'll see that we've got that in my A roll smart collection labeled Matthew because Matthew is here in the text of the file name and automatically went into this smart collection. Then we're going to go over to audio and we're going to go here and then location and then boom, drag this in. And you see with the boom smart collection, it's automatically in there already. Next up is screen recording. So we go here, navigate to screen recording and then drag that in and you'll see that it's automatically in that smart collection because the screen recording text is part of the file name so it automatically goes there so next i'm going to show you my project i have an untitled project so i'm going to rename this 137 6 fcp tips rough edit v1 so you can see over here in the inspector that my project is set to a vertical orientation. It's 2048 by 4096, which is a two to one aspect ratio, which really fits nicely into smartphones, especially when they're held in the vertical orientation. Normally my videos are horizontal at 4096 by 2048, but again, this is a YouTube short and it's gonna be on TikTok. So I wanna have it at that vertical orientation. And we've got a hard 24 frames per second, so we're good there. And then I can double click this, open it up, and I'm ready to start. Now in this project, I have my core elements. So for all of my YouTube shorts that are six tips with Final Cut Pro, I have like arrows and sound effects and numbers that I use, and they scramble with distortion. I don't wanna have to remake those every time I edit a YouTube short. So I keep this stuff all here ready to copy and paste between this, this project and my edit project. And that allows me to really speed up my editing turnaround time so I'm ready to go. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to sync my video to my Boom Audio since I recorded my audio externally. So I'm gonna go and click on the library and then I've got my footage here and then my Boom Audio here and I'm gonna make a synchronized clip. Now, this is important. I'm gonna call this Matthew Sync. I'm gonna make sure this goes into the footage folder because it's footage primarily. Now this by default is just wants to put it into a 1920 by 1080 container, but I want to have my synchronized clip match what my project output is going to be. So I'm gonna to have to go to custom and then do 2048 by 4096 because I want this to be what I'm going to output, even though the footage is 1920 by 1080. So we'll hit okay. And then we've got this synchronized clip that looks funny because it's, you know, letterboxed and all that. But what I can do is I can go inside now and I can change the orientation of this clip. Let's get this down to 25%. And then we're going to scale this up to fit. Now it's okay that, you know, there's an area of the frame that's outside because these are two different aspect ratios. The 1920 by 1080 is a 16 to nine aspect ratio for uh, 2048 by 4096 or 4096 by 2048 is a two to one aspect ratio. But this is generally what I, you know, like, you know, there's a little bit of headroom there. But I'm going to add a shape mask and all that to this so it's not really that big of a deal. Right, so now that I have the vertical orientation figured out, I need to add my basic color grade. So I'm going to type in EOSR and I've got one here, my shorts to EOSR. And that puts the basic grade on there and that looks pretty good to me. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get my audio where I want it. So I'm going to disable this and just listen to my boom audio and see what the levels are at. If I wanted to insert a dummy clip or a placeholder clip or something that just has nothing 
So we're riding a pretty low here below negative 20. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my dialogue effect, which includes a compressor and limiter. And we'll see what that does to the old waveform. It's going to boost it up a you little bit. To insert a dummy. But I really want my audio more closer to negative six. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit and boost this up all the way to 12. That's going to be way too loud, but that's okay. If you've ever wanted to insert a dummy clip or a placeholder clip or something that just has nothing, if you've ever, if you've, you can hear me starting and stopping. To insert. Because so I'm just going to turn that down so it doesn't get included in the synchronized clip mix. And for any reason I need it later, it'll be there for me to use. All right, so now that we have the synchronized clip, we need to sync the synchronized clip to the screen recording that I made, which has audio as well. So for that, I'm going to actually use a multicam clip and I'm going to choose Matthew Sync and the screen recording and I'm going to choose a new multicam clip and we're going to call it Matthew Multi. We're going to put it in the footage folder and we're going to do this uh, again in vertical. We want to match our output settings. So we're going to be 2048 by 4096 and we're going to be a hard 24 frames per second because that's what we filmed in and I'm going to hit OK. And then this is going to sync everything based on the, the audio from both clips. And I'm going to change this to screen recording. And I'm going to call this. Uh, yeah, you know, Matthew sync is fine. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back out to my edit and I'm going to drop the Matthew multi. So we'll put that down in the timeline. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and put it on two different levels. And then I'm going to switch this angle to my mine right there. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to go over here and pull up a preset that I have. Oh, what did I call it? Short. Yeah, my shorts mask. And I'm going to drag that on. And that's going to do a little picture in picture effect over here. And what this allows, the reason I do this is because if there's ever a point where I want to switch this angle to me in full screen during the short while I explain it, I have that easily accessible. Um, but I also have the screen recording easily accessible. And then on top of everything I have, I have me. Now this does add a little bit of time to editing down the A roll. So what I'll typically do is I'll actually leave this off. And then I'll edit the A roll down using my main angle here, get it all chopped up so it's nice and tight and everything's down to about a minute. And then I'll duplicate that all those little cut up clips up above the timeline and then make sure I batch change the angle so that it's uh, the angle with me. And then I'll apply the shorts mask to all of those clips so that the picture in picture effect is there. And then while I'm going through my screen recordings, I can be using add motion to do all the animations for my screen recordings. And then at the very end, I'll copy and paste in all of the stuff from my core elements project, the numbers, the sound effects, all that stuff so that I can put that final polish pass on the video. So this is a little bit different than how I prep my footage for a main channel YouTube video versus a short, um, but I wanted to give you all a window into exactly what my thinking is with why I do things the way I do things. So we saw something new in how I make a synchronized clip, how I include that synchronized clip in the multicam. And then because I'm showing a screen recording and myself with a picture in picture effect, what I have to do to set that up for the edit process. The big takeaways from this again are to get up and running as quickly as possible with your YouTube shorts is to have that Finder template and that Final Cut Pro library template so you're not making all of that stuff from scratch every single time you make a video. Your project's ready to go, your core elements are there, your library's already populated with the sound effects and the graphics that you use. And your Finder template uh, allows you to have all of your footage, your audio, everything that you're using to make the video go someplace that's organized, that's repeatable every time you make a video so that you're never hunting for your, for your assets or your media while you make a video. So I'm going to include a link in the description that will get you access to my free Finder template. And that includes my Final Cut Pro library template. It won't be for my shorts, but it'll have my main channel YouTube video Final Cut template with all of this event organization and all that stuff. You guys can have that for free and start using it or modifying it if your workflow is a little bit different than mine. 
but it's a nice jumping off point to make sure that you are organized. Your footage and media assets always have a place to go and you're never sort of searching for things and dealing with the chaos of disorganization, taking up your time as you create your films, your YouTube content, whatever it is that you're making. So that's all I've got for this one. I need to get started editing the short so I can get it up before the end of the day tomorrow. If you like this video, click the like button. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. And until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Yeah.